welcome back for the lectures of control system engineering uh, in the previous lecture we have seen the concept of uh, stability and on the basis of the preparation of the routes table on the way by which the sign conventions which are changing which are constants or are changing depending upon that we have seen the system can be defined as a stable system or a unstable system uh, to continue with this the second aspect there are few cases which are involved out of which the first important case will be related to the part of uh, a row element in which the third row element has a zero in the first column we will look one by one all these cases and see how those cases are to be handled with with the spatial considerations here when we are going to start with a special case that is the row harvey's special case a zero in the first column now when i say it's a zero in the first column uh, it's a regular way by which a transfer function will be given to you uh, wherein we are going to prepare the first and the second row as we have defined in the previous cases and over here when you are preparing the third row we can come across for the first part that we are taking these values as 1 2 3 and 6 from two rows above that s to the power 3 row and with the minus sign when we solve this we get the value as 0 now when we get this value as 0 when we substitute over here the second value we can get it because it will depend upon these two elements taken into consideration so 1 2 5 and 3 when you take this parameter with the minus sign we get the value as 7 by 2 but since the first column element is coming as 0 when we want to proceed with the next row since this element becomes as a dividing parameter the value is coming over here as infinity so we cannot proceed with the route table therefore what we do for this special case when we get a 0 in the first column we substitute it by a small positive or a negative value element as epsilon so epsilon is to be considered as an element as the first column element in the third row and then we continue with epsilon for the next steps so in the next step considered along with epsilon we get 6 epsilon minus 7 upon epsilon we get the value of 3 over here we continue with the value of epsilon so this value comes in terms of epsilon and the final value we get it as 3 now on the basis of the first column we want to go for prediction of the system stability so what we do over here is since we can go with epsilon as a small positive value when we substitute in the corresponding column elements here when you substitute epsilon as small positive we get a positive sign over here when you substitute epsilon as small positive value this value comes in terms of a minus value again in this part when we substitute epsilon as small positive value this becomes plus and the final value is plus 3 therefore it is recorded as plus so you can observe that in this first column up to this element this becomes the first sign change so from s to the power 3 to s power 2 that's the first sign change observed and from minus to plus that becomes the second sign change and here since there are two sign changes observed so you can consider that for one sign change also the system becomes unstable okay so we can directly predict that the system is unstable and on the basis of number of sign changes so number of sign changes observed over here are two therefore we can say that out of five roots out of five roots two will go in the right half of the s plane and remaining three will remain in the left half of the s plane and therefore out of five since these two elements or two roots are going in the right half of the s plane the system is unstable so this was the special case of a zero which was introduced in the first column and this is the way we can go for predicting the behavior of a system for stability or unstability we look for the next case in the next case this is again a special case which involves the entire row comes out to be a zero row so considering this example 
you have to determine how many number of pools or roots lie in the right half of the plane for this given closed transfer function. We will see uh, the preparation of the routes table. So, we have prepared the route table depending upon the characteristic equation as the first row 168. The second row comes with the elements as 7, 42 and 56. Since 7 is, is coming in terms of multiples of 7, we can reduce it to 1, 6 and 8 respectively. And then the third row preparation depending upon the first two rows, we go on preparing. So, we observe come across the element as 0 over here. We come across the second column element as 0, the third column element as a 0. So, we get the entire row to be a 0 row. So, this becomes a second special case. Now, when it when we come across a 0 in the any of the rows, we cannot proceed with the routes table. And therefore, for such part, we require to substitute this 0 row element and that substitution will be done by a special case that is nothing but preparing an auxiliary equation. So, the auxiliary equation is prepared from the row which is above the 0th row. So, from this row, we are going to prepare the auxiliary equation. So, the first parameter or first element of that auxiliary will be s to the power 4 with a coefficient of 1. So, it is s raised to 4. The second, since you have skipped every time one element, therefore, the second coefficient will be 6 s raised to 2 and the final element is plus 8. So, this becomes our auxiliary equation. So, this auxiliary equation needs to be solved further in order to go for getting the coefficients to be substituted in the s to the power 3 row. So, what we do is that we go on considering the derivative of this auxiliary with respect to s and when we get this derivative, the coefficients of s cube is coming as 4 and the coefficient of s is coming as 12, which we substitute over here as 4 and 12, which is further reduced as 1 and 3 and this naturally is coming as 0. So, we continue with 1, 3, 0, 1, 6 and 8 for preparing this s to the power 2 row and accordingly we go for further calculations, we go on completing the routes table, finally it will come down to a reduced value of 8 which was reduced at this stage. Now looking at the first column, we can say that the system may be stable just by looking because there is no sign change observed in the first column. But since we are coming across an auxiliary equation which is nothing but prepared by the row which is above the 0th row. Therefore, there are chances that the system may go for marginal stability. And therefore, in this case, we can go for finding out the further consideration with the auxiliary equation which is prepared, the derivative of the auxiliary equation which is prepared, that derivative what we have to do over here, this derivative we have to equate to 0. So, 4 s cube plus 12 s is equated to 0 and here the next part will be s cube plus 3 s is equal to 0 or s square is equal to minus 3 and therefore, the roots what we get as s 1 2 of this will be plus minus 1.73 times g. So, we get a imaginary value. So, this imaginary values if you plot on the s plane, there will be these are the real values as 1, 2, etcetera. This is minus 1, minus 2 and these are positive imaginary values as 1j, 2j, 3j, minus 1j, minus 2j, minus 3j. So, this values what we get as plus minus 1.73j are coming on the imaginary axis. And therefore, since they are not repeated values, therefore, out of 5 root because the highest power of s is s raised to 5 and s raised to 5 power out of this 5 roots, 2 roots are nothing but falling on the imaginary axis and therefore, remaining 3 will be lying in the left half of the s plane. And therefore, further prediction what we can do is that the system is coming to be marginally stable because we observed that a pair of root falls on the imaginary axis. So, these are the considerations for an entire row coming out to be a 0 
and the methodology what we have just seen preparing an auxiliary, taking the derivative, substituting the coefficients, proceeding with the Routes table and then finally predicting on the basis of equating this equation to 0 getting the roots and finding the roots that the roots are falling on the imaginary the prediction is going for that the values since are coming on the imaginary the system is marginally stable. So, this was the second case we will go for the next one. So, students uh, you can uh, practice down for this problem as a practice problem. You can determine the number of poles in the right half plane, the left half plane and on the imaginary axis for this closed loop transfer function. In the next lecture, you will see how you have solved it and what problems you have encountered when you are solving this particular problem. So, you can have a practice problem for this, for this transfer function which is given on the board. You can just take it down, it is 20 divided by the characteristic equation which is coming as highest power is s to the power 8 and then it is in the decreasing order of s. So, it is a regular methodology. So, you can work out for whether it comes as a special case with one element as 0, whether it is coming as a second special case where the entire row is coming as 0 and then depending upon what type of considerations are there we can go for finding out or predicting the system stability. Okay. So, this is the last case in the Routh Hurwitz stability criterion that whenever the particular transfer functions are given to you in terms of the gain k of a system. So, here a representative control system is given to you where r of s is nothing but the input of a system, c of s is nothing but an output of a system. This is the forward gain block that is g of s, h of s given not given over here means it is a unity feedback system h of s is 1 and then we can go on finding out the closed loop transfer function as t of s is equal to g of s upon 1 plus g of s into h of s. Okay, so, this transfer function is nothing but recorded over here as k upon s cube plus 18 s square plus 77 s plus k. So, this characteristic equation what we get which we are going to use for preparing the routes table is in terms of k. Now, the question which is asked is you have to find out the range of this gain k for the system that will cause the system to be a stable system, unstable and marginally stable. So, all these three considerations are now based on the particular value of the gain k which we are going to define by preparing the route table. So, taking into consideration this characteristic equation, we substitute the values of the coefficients of s power terms in the route table for preparing the first two rows and then we are going to find out that for what particular range of k in k the system is stable, unstable and marginally stable. So, this is the way by which we have prepared the route table with the decreasing order of s, s to the power 3 up to s to the power 0. We have arranged the first two elements as 177, second row as 18 and k. We have prepared the third row element over here depending upon the values in the first two rows and then we have got the values in terms of k. Now, we have just predicted for the system stability in the first case, general case what we call it as that if I got all these elements with the same sign convention, we say that the system is a stable system. So, in order to have that particular type of prediction, what we have to do over here is that we are going to consider that the values of k in k in order to have the first column as a positive value, the last element this gain k must be greater than 0. So, that is the first condition because when k is greater than 0, this value is nothing but a positive value and the second value of s 1 row that is 1386 minus k divided by 18 also must be greater than 0 and therefore, when we solve this we get that k must be less than 1386. So, if you just go on finding out the range of gain k for which the system must be stable, unstable or marginally stable considerations, the cases will be that the 
range of gain k that k must be greater than 0 and less than 1386. So, this is a range of gain k. When k is greater than 0, this becomes plus and when gain k is less than 1386 means what? If you substitute the value of gain k over here as 1 3 which is 1386 less than 1386 this entire value will be a positive value. So, when all the values are plus we say that the system is a stable system. We go for the second consideration when you substitute the value of gain k as equal to 1386 in this equation in this equation we will find out that we get 1386 minus 1386 it becomes a 0 we get a 0 row. And once we get a 0 row, we understand that we are going to prepare the auxiliary of the equation of s power 2 term and in this part we will substitute the marginal value of k as 1386 and we define the roots of this equation, the system becomes marginally stable. So, that is the second case and when the value of gain k is greater than 1386, if you substitute in this equation the value of gain k as 1386 which is greater than 1386 we get a minus sign and that is an indicator that the first column we are getting a sign change it indicates that the system is unstable system. So, depending upon the range of the gain k value we can go for defining the system to be a stable system. So, k greater than 0 less than 1386 the system is a stable system. When the value of gain k is substituted as 1386, the system becomes marginally stable. So, that is a marginal stable condition and when gain k is greater than 1386, the system becomes unstable. So, by this way, we can say that the system stability can be defined through the concept of by three all different three cases what we have taken into aspect and therefore, over here, we have defined by route stability criterion just by observing at the first column and with the consideration of all three cases, how the system can be defined to be a stable system, unstable system or marginally stable system. So, thank you. We will meet in the next lecture with the root locus technique. Good day.